Here's the confirmation window we're going to make in this tutorial. All assets that are used will be linked in the description and they're completely free. So when I was starting out with Unity, I found that I'd make a lot of user interface panels that could only be used for one specific purpose. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a quick pop-up window that can be used anytime you need it. The advantage to this is that you can change what happens for each button click via code. You don't have to go into the inspector and make any changes. Here I have a blank project and I'm going to import a UI pack that I just downloaded from kenny.nl. The link will be in the description below. Let's create a panel and we're going to name it confirmation window. Let's go to the folder with the UI sprites that we downloaded and find something to use for the background of the panel. Just confirm that the texture type set to sprite. And then what we want to do is go into the sprite editor and we're going to nine slice this. If you're not familiar with nine slicing, Basically, it sets the corners of the image, so when you resize it in the editor, it won't resize the corners and the image will scale to any size. Select the confirmation window and drag the image into the source image, and now that's the background for our panel. Let's just resize it to a size that we want here. Add any tint that you want to the background of the panel as well as the camera. I just played around and found some colors I liked here. Let's go to the window menu at the top and select Text Mesh Pro and we're going to import that into our project. And then next we'll need to generate a font atlas from the Kenny font that came as part of that UI pack that we downloaded. So we'll just select that and then save it to any folder here. Under the panel let's make a Text Mesh Pro button and then we'll name this button to Yes button and change the text it displays to just say Yes. Now let's duplicate that button and we're going to do the same thing with that one and just change everything to say no. Now we're going to pick two background images for the button. So I'm just going to use two different colors here and then we're going to nine slice them again. And if you're still not comfortable with what that is, I'm not really explaining it in this video, but leave a comment and I can always make another video and explain that in detail. Uh, once you're done nine slicing each one, drag them into the image slot for the button and that'll set it as the background. Add a Text Mesh Pro object under our panel here. Uh, make sure it is actually under the panel and not one of the buttons. And then let's just name this message text. Set up the text however you want it to display in the panel. Select all three text objects in the hierarchy and let's set it to use that Kenny font that we made with Text Mesh Pro. Then you can set the text color to be whatever you want here. Now add a script to your panel object in the hierarchy and let's call it confirmation window and then open that up in Visual Studio. First thing we need to add in using unityengine.ui and using TM Pro for Text Mesh Pro so we can access both these components. And we won't be needing starter update in this one so we can get rid of both of those. Create two buttons. One's going to be a yes button and the other a no button. And then we're also going to create a text mesh pro UGUI object. And this is going to be the message text. This is actually everything we need in this script. So let's save this, go back into Unity. And in the script in the inspector, we just need to drag in each button and the message text. This panel and script are ready to be used now. So let's make a test object and then we'll add on a test script. Open that script in Visual Studio and the first thing we'll need to do here is make a reference to that panel. I'm just going to name mine My Confirmation Window. Add serialized fields so we can see it in the inspector and let's go back into Unity and we're just going to go to that script and let's just drag in our confirmation window to it. Now disable the confirmation window as we're going to enable that via code. We can delete update here as we won't be needing that. First thing I'm going to do now is create a method for what happens when the yes button is clicked. So we're going to tell it to hide the panel and then just debug out to the console that yes was clicked. Let's copy and paste that method and we're going to do the same thing for the no button. Create a method that's going to open the confirmation window and it'll also pass in a string and that's going to be the message text that will display on the window. Now to link up our methods to the actual button clicks, we can access a reference to each button that we set up in the other script. And then what we have to do is add what's called a listener onto it. This works the same way as clicking the, the plus sign in the editor next to a button. So for the on-click event, you would click a button and then drag something in. We're doing the exact same thing, but via code. 
So we want to first pick what type of listener we want to use. In this case, it's the on click event listener. You could use a listener for any other type of button state. Same thing you would see in the inspector. Let's add the same thing for the no button. And essentially what these lines are saying is take the yes button for the on click, add a listener that's watching for a click. And when it's clicked, call the method called yes clicked. That's all there is to it. And in those methods, you can do any code you want. And the last thing we want to do here is take the string that was passed in called message and assign it into the message text on that panel. Our confirmation window is now ready to be used. So let's call it from the start method and pass in a message of, are you sure? Okay, now let's run it and we'll demo to make sure everything's working. So when we click on the yes button, it should output to the console, yes was clicked. Okay, and it did, so let's stop it and just test the no. And that one's working as well. So yeah, this is just a, a quick demo of what you can do with this. Um, some examples that come to mind, like using it exactly as it is, you could do things like a, a quit menu, uh, if you're destroying something in your game, anything you want to ask the user to make sure they confirm it, and then do a different action based on which button is clicked. Um, some other examples of things you can do with this is you could add another method onto the confirmation window script and you could use it for multiple purposes. So currently we have it as a confirmation window. You could easily make a method that would hide those two buttons, only display an OK button, and then it's just a notification window so it'll pop up. And when you press OK on the screen, using the, the method we showed using a on click event listener, you could tell it to do different things for each time the button is clicked uh, on OK. So it, it gives you a lot of flexibility to use for different scenarios. In, in this system, we kept it pretty simple. So there was a lot of references where you had to click and drag stuff in the inspector. Um, that's just to kind of keep it simple for an intro. There's a lot of ways you can do it where you don't need to do any of that referencing. You can look into statics as well as uh, singleton pattern. And then using those, you can put in your script just something like confirmation window dot enable and it'll pop up and do everything for you. You don't have to do a search for it. You don't have to drag it in the inspector. This should give you a lot of ways to look into more things you can do with menus. Uh, if you want me to make any of those kind of tutorials on that, or if you want me to make them more in depth and explain them instead of a quick summary like this, leave a comment below, let me know, and I'll do what I can. Uh, if this helped you at all, please subscribe. It helps out a lot.